Hi everyone, I've been asked to do a video on how to blend mica powders in your moulds and uh, just had this mould come from Timu and thought that could be a good one to demo with. Now, got the tools together um, we have got some eyeshadow applicators and we've got some paint brushes and uh, the powders that I will be using are from the Tiny Turner and some of these, some of them are these ones that look pretty much white but you can see the coloured shine in them. I think they're called ethereal pigments, yep, yeah, that's right, that's what it says. And the others are these colour flippy chameleon ones which are called chameleon pigments and I've got quite a collection of these. Now if anybody wants any of this I'll put you the link for the butterfly mould on Timu down below. Also the pigments you can now get from Wendy at Toonpish Crafts, so uh, I'll put you the link for those as well. Right, now, you may have seen in some videos that you can also use alcohol to apply your colours to your mould, but the question I've been asked is just the simple powder application and blending, so that is the technique we're going to be looking at today. We've got a nice shiny mould. That's the first thing. If you've got a satin finish mould, a matte one, uh, it might not work so well, if at all. But this is a nice shiny, shiny mould. And what you have to remember when you're applying any sort of mica powders to a mould is that you're working back to front. So, you know, like with paint, you'll put a base colour on, then you'll build up other colours on top. You're doing it back to front here because it's what is touching the silicon is going to be your top layer so whatever you put on first will be the layer that you see now bear that in mind and you should be fine <laughs> first thing I want to do is show you um, sort of how to put some detail into smaller areas so first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a small brush because we're going to do these here and I think we're going to have what color shall we have should we have this pearly this is one of the ether ethereal pigments and it's called Aurora and it's pearly blue. Now of course the other thing to bear in mind is that it will change, the way this looks won't do it justice until you put a, a black background on it. You don't have to go for black but generally I think that's what most of us do. So we're just painting into the details that we want. So these are all the, the kind of highlights and if you've got a mould like this where the it's got lots of really defined areas, that's quite easy to do. And also, if you're like me and you've got too much on your brush, <laughs> the trick is to have as little as possible, to be honest. But if you've got uh, if you've got it, if it's gone everywhere, don't worry, because you can wipe it away later, any surplus. So all we're doing is just colouring in these details, and I'll do the ones at the bottom as well. So once we've got the details in. Um, we start looking at the bigger areas. I'll show you what we mean about this shading thing that people have been asking about. So all we're doing really is we're burnishing this into the surface of the of the rubber and it sticks because it is such a soft shiny well not it's not that soft actually to be fair but it's a it got it's got a cling to it if you know what I mean. Now if you prefer, you could use the eyeshadow applicators, these ones. Some people do prefer to use these. Uh, I find them quite handy for cleaning up afterwards actually, um, and the blending part. Right, that's all those circles done. And now this is what I meant about getting off the surplus. Because these are all recessed, what you can do is just go over it with a damp cloth, or some tape if you prefer, and you'll skim across the surface of those inlaid areas and it will just take away your surplus. So the next thing to do is the same exercise but getting into all of these lines because I'm going to want those lines drawn in effectively. So that's going to need some black. Now there isn't black in this range because these are all pig, uh, um, you know, chameleon and things like that. So there is no black in these powders. So I'm just going to grab, what have I got? Probably one from Estoyo, actually. I think there's a black in that range. That's pretty good. 
It doesn't have to be a completely black, it just wants to be dark, you know. That's pretty close to black, isn't it? Now I'm going to put the lid on this because the um, if you knock that over, it's going to go flying everywhere. And these are proper top end mica powders. You really don't want to be wasting them, they're not cheap. Now, this obviously hasn't even been opened yet, it's so new. Uh, find a little knife. I find this is I just find this is the easiest way to get the tops off these things and I'm going to be doing it over the side here away from my uh, mould because I don't want to get the powder flying everywhere and it end up where I don't want it. So there we go it's almost black it's as close as it's going to get. Now this is the bit where you're going to think I'm a bit crazy because I'm going in with a bigger brush and I'm going to put a little bit of this powder out into a little pot because it'll be easier to get at then. So, tiny spoon time. That's more than enough, I should say. And this is what I mean about the putting it on and wiping it off thing. Because this is going to go into all of these lines and say so that's why I'm using a slightly bigger brush. And it probably will go where I don't want it to go. So the wiping off trick will come in handy here. So I'm just going to go into all these outlines. I'll speed this bit up for you. So as you can see, that looks a bit of a mess. But again, all you do is you go over and you wipe off your surplus. Now I've gone quite well up the sides on this because I wasn't entirely sure how far up the sides I will go. Can you see how that's just coming away and leaving it in the grooves? Not entirely, it's just leaving in enough to get some marks in there. Do you see what I mean? I didn't necessarily want to take it all out completely. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't intend to leave it all in those lines completely. You can if you want. But what I'm doing is just going over so it's got that little bit of a hint of the black going through those outlines. I might just put a little bit more back in. I don't know. What I've done is I've gone rather across the lines, uh, rather along the lines rather than across, and it's pulled out a bit more than I intended. So let's go back in. So you can always go back in. If, there's, if you think you've taken out too much, you can just go back in there. The wipes I'm using, by the way, are Wonder Wipes. I would shy away from using baby wipes, folks, because baby wipes can actually degrade because there's moisturizer and all sorts of you know nice baby stuff in there but it's uh, not necessarily the sort of stuff you want to get on your your molds so I would tend to use these which are proper tradesmen's wipes I think I've got alcohol in them or something There we go. And now this is where really those little makeup brushes come in so handy. These little uh, makeup applicators, because you can do your final clean up like so. Once you've got the bulk of it off. So I'm just going to work my way around and do this. Cotton buds work too, by the way. No problem with using cotton buds. But what's happening here is that any of the black that's remained on the raised areas is now starting to blend and shade a bit. 
so it's not going to be a, a too artificially perfect finish to it. You see the lines are starting to show. Now don't forget you're going to be putting a black background on as well as I said so anywhere that you've completely missed the black will show through but I do tend to do like a finished coat so we're starting to get a bit of a blending now already See when I'm cleaning it up we're going to get a little bit of that shading coming through still. So feel free to go around this as many times as you want to get as much or as little detail in there with your darker colour. Depends what you're trying to achieve. I'm trying to get like a bit of an antique look to this I suppose that's what you'd call it. A little bit distressed. I'm distressed. I'm always distressed. Do I sound distressed? Sorry. I've gone off on one again haven't I? Okay, how's that looking? So we should have a bit of shading going on, which is what I wanted. See, it's not solid in those lines. That's that's the point. Now, to get some proper manual blending going on. I'm just going to let that dry off because there will be a bit of dampness from my cloth in there. But let's pick our colours while we're, while we're waiting. Obviously, we want purple. We've got green. These greens are gorgeous. Uh, so which purple and which green? This one's called Arcane. Nether. I'm going to go with that one because it's darker, I think. Then we've got these, which are just, they look like, that's called Inferno for a reason. Fairy Flame. And that's very chameleon-y. And we've got all these other colours too, you see. that This one, these the ethereal ones. You have to catch the light to see what colour they're going to come out. We've used Aurora. What's this one? Supernova. Woo! So we'll be using all of these probably. <laughs> see? Different colours in the shine. I think they're what they call interference, aren't they? Okay, we've got our colours. Now that should be just drying out nicely. So what I'm going to do is get uh, a softer, a bigger softer brush. Let me see if I can find a suitable one. Another one of those actually would do nicely. And we're just going to get in there and uh, blend, you see. That's the idea. Now, I'm going to start with the dark colour in the centre and blend outwards. So let's go in with Arcane. Look at that. Now if you want to just get a tiny bit on your brush, going in into your lid to get the first bit is quite a nice trick. I think I'm going to need a bit more. Now don't forget anywhere where you go over where you've got your black, you're not going to see that anyway. Yeah, let's go in with loads. <laughs> you're not going to see that anyway because it's... Um, the black's already there on the silicon surface, so you're not you're going to see the black rather than the purple. And the same with these little dots. We can just go straight across. And all I'm doing, as you can see, is just flicking the colour outwards until it runs out on my brush. And you want to try and get the same both sides if you're doing something symmetrical of course which the butterfly will be and if you find you've gone too far again you can just get a cloth or a, or a clean makeup brush you know the little the little applicator sponge applicators and you can take it back a bit but I think that looks pretty good and then the trick really is just keep going back over it just to blend the where it ends and 
and then we're going to go around the outsides of his little body a bit as well but we'll get in the centre with a different colour so this is what I mean about taking it back a bit I'm going to want to have a bit of space for a different colour down the centre of his body so let's just pull that back out a little bit right next brush incidentally cleaning your brushes dead easy just do that and they come up clean of course they're going to be damp now which you probably don't want so yeah have some nice clean dry brushes standing by right next color now i would say we want that purple to blend into green so let's go for this one if i can get the lid off ah, there we are this one is called nature Another one of my favourites. We're going to start at the outer edge this time and blend inwards. Uh, again, where you're going over the other colours, you're not going to see it anyway, so you can just splash it on. And you'll probably lose your purple at this point. But what you're doing is you're getting into the edges of it, the bit where there's less of the purple. And keep just work it in so it will blend across. And I think around the edges we'll blend out to one of these fiery orange colours. And his body, although we have got a little bit of the green around his body now. Let's just leave that around the one side like that. certain amount of this is go with the flow. Now if you do find that the detailing that you put into the lines, because this I will have lost a certain oops, this I will have lost a certain amount because of the um because I took a lot of the black out. But if you find you've lost more than you wanted when you actually demold, you can there's nothing to stop you getting back in there with some black UV or glittery, you know, glittery UV or with a pen. Or, um, or even with just something like acrylic paint. In fact, I've even been known to use a Sharpie. <laughs> Surprisingly, does work. Okay, so we should have some green in the ends of those bits now. Now, the body and the little antenna, the antenna's fine isn't it, it's the body and the tips of the wings now, let's get in there with some like really fiery colours, so I'm going to use this one which is called starlight and it looks like it's going to be like a bright gold, so this can go straight into it, oh look at that, it can go straight into his body like so, I say, And I'm going to do the tips of his wings with this as well, I think. And we're nearly there. So I hope this is answering the question about how to blend it. See what I've got so far with this colour. Just that little touch. Let's put a bit of that into there as well. I don't know whether we'll see it because I've got a lot of the black in there, didn't I? So I've just put a bit of it around the edges and then we're going to get the surplus off our brush and we're just going to go in again and work it. We're pushing it inwards. Right now, just the darker of these. I uh, don't think there's a lot in it. Let's go in with Inferno next because this is really. Oh, you can see I've used a lot of this one, can't you? Oh, dry cleaning your brush, by the way. If you're not worried about being 100% clean but just want to get the worst of it off, just rub it on your mat. So 
So we're just going to go back the opposite direction and then really work it backwards and forwards like that. And then that just leaves you once you've finished once you've finished doing this to come up with whatever colour you want to be your back coat. Now when I say back coat what I mean is I tend to dust over the whole thing with, with, with one of the colours just to pick up any bits I've missed on the way through. You see how that's blended? Um, so I've got to just make a decision on that. I mean theoretically I won't have missed much but what I'm thinking is maybe the black. Just tipping the surplus off there. Uh, yeah, let's go in with the black. And what I typically do with this is just get a nice big fluffy brush. You don't have to do this. I mean, any bits you've missed, the um, just the oops, the black resin will show through, won't it? Or whatever colour you've chosen to use. But a final dust over with something. I find just useful to pick up any bits I've missed. So there we go and I've made an almighty mess. Next step then I'll clean up and I'll get some resin out. I'm not sure how much resin this is going to take. Um, no idea if this is enough. <laughs> we'll soon see. Uh, however as we're only mixing it up with black it's not too difficult to make some more if it isn't. So yeah just stirring it up. This is Apex High Gloss. It's a nice easy one to one. Easy to use never lets me down and dries beautifully. Now I could use something like Apex One Coat which is the two hour cure one um, but I'm not in a hurry on this occasion so we'll just use the regular um, general purpose one I think of it. It's a medium viscosity, does up to like a medium sort of depth um, so it'll do shallow, pour, very shallow pores too in fact. Very 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 shallow pores. <laughs> Um, and it'll go up to what I don't know, a couple of inches. I've gone up, I've gone a bit deeper than that, and not had it flash cure or anything like that. Although it is pushing your luck. Anybody who's seen my um, video on the Valentine's Day heart with all the flowers in, that was where I pushed my luck too far, and it did flash cure. However, it was still okay. The results were all right. Just wasn't quite what I had planned. <laughs> pigment I'm putting in is the one I've got from Vista that I've had for absolutely ages and I want to use the bottle up to be honest so we're just going to put that in but it makes a nice inky black. I usually use the pigment paste from just a few online but it's one of the many things that I can't actually find at the moment. You know when you tidy up and it makes it worse that's happened. Right I'm going to keep stirring until this is well mixed up and then we'll chuck it in and we'll see what happens. Incidentally I did turn the butterfly over and tap off the surplus. You don't have to do that because all that's going to happen if you don't is that the surplus will just float up to the top and you'll get right like a quite a nice back on it but I did just because I was having a clean up so I carried on and did that too. If you're interested, I just got it off my silicon mat. Oh, I've got it over my hands. I got it off my silicon mat just with um, because it's only that mica powder. I got it off the silicon mat with just uh, sudsy water. Don't need to be spraying with alcohol and things like that. You can do, but let's say just sudsy water did it. Okay, I'm back, and that should be well and truly mixed up by now. So let's just pour it in. Now don't panic, you're not going to dislodge any of this. It's all well and truly stuck down to the mould. You know what, I think I guessed this about right. It's not far off anyway. Because we're not going to fill it right right up. I don't think this top bit here, I don't think you feel that. Might need just a little bit more. But you'll start to see, see around the edges, some of the mica powder will be um, floating up anyway. Don't panic about that. And we're just going to walk off and patiently leave it once I'm sure I've got enough. Uh, and we will see you in a few hours. This resin usually takes, meant to be about 20 hours to fully harden. I usually find I can demold it an awful lot quicker than that. 
um, I'll probably be able to by tonight, especially if I get a little bit of heat around it. It's quite cool in here at the moment, but if I get some heat, uh, you know, turn the heating on basically, then it will probably be ready to cure within a, with, to demold in about eight or ten hours, something like that. Um, ideally, I would say to you, leave it overnight though, really. Let it cure properly. But for the purposes of the video, I will be hurrying things up by getting some heat on it. Just mixing up a bit more resin then, and I will see you later for the demold. Hi everyone. Throughout March, I'll be taking part in the Motor Neurone Disease Association's Craft in March event. It's a fundraiser for the association. There'll be some information coming up here. Now, if you'd like to support me in doing this event, then I will put the link down below. Any donations made via my Buy Me A Coffee link throughout March will go completely to the charity. So they sent me this. I've ticked off two days already, as you can probably see. <laughs> I won't be posting a video up every day, of course, because some projects will take a couple of days. But um, I will show you my progress. I'll be putting out videos regularly so you can enjoy the videos I make throughout this challenge. Now, I craft a lot, but even for me, every day is a bit of a challenge because, yeah, I still have other things to do some days, like go to work at the museum uh, or mum duty and things like that. So it is going to be a bit of a challenge. I hope you enjoy the videos and thank you so much in advance for all your donations. The link for the buy me a coffee is down below and I will, if I can work out how to do it, put the QR code on the screen for those watching on telly too. And also I will, of course, keep you updated on progress via my community tab. And also at the end of the period, I will total it all up and let you know how much we've raised to send straight on to the charity. Right, time to demould. Let's see if this has worked. Sorry about the shine. It's a late evening, so I've got all artificial light. Hello, try again. I've got all artificial lighting going on. Now you can see how the mica powders have transferred off the mould. So that's definitely worked. Let's see if the blending effects worked. Yeah, there we go. You can see the purple fading out. You can see the oh, some funny marks there. You can see the orange fading through to the gold and so that's worked yeah and isn't it interesting how that, that just looked like white in the pot is actually green can you see the fading across the little the butterfly itself as well there we go so you've got your fady colors it's it might be a bit hard to tell actually because they're so color flippy anyway these are aren't they <laughs> maybe i'll do this again sometime with um, some mica powders that aren't color flippy but I think you can probably see the see it most obviously in the ends of these. Can you see it's green here, and then it's purple down here, and uh, yeah, orange there, and more sort of gold at this end. So yeah, there we go. Now you know how to blend your mica powders to get like a a colour fade across. I hope this was helpful anyway so I'll see you for the next video don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you would please and uh, thank you very much for whoever it was that asked me to do this I hope you see this video because I honestly can't remember who it was so uh, there's, there were several <laughs> so I hope that has answered your question thanks everyone and I will see you soon bye